Good evening, good evening. It is Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I actually forgot to take that Weeble uh, trailer off. My bad. We do have uh, episode two coming out, the second one. Um, it will be out, I think, next Tuesday. Where I think we're going to stick to a Tuesday for those. Those in Patreon, you'll probably get to see it this weekend. Um, it's done, so it's not like an issue. Um, I just haven't had much time to do many uploads lately. Uh, we've got a lot going on, as I hope everybody else does. Having a lot of stuff going on is usually a good thing, um, believe it or not. I know a lot of people get uh, aggravated and um, just feel like there's too much going on sometimes. But for me, I, I love that sort of thing. So hopefully you're one of those because it's more fun when there's a lot of stuff bombarding you in my book. Makes uh, for some excitement and uh, things going on. Hopefully everybody is hearing me first or hearing me okay. I'll get to some names. Um, we'll call out some folks here. I see quite a few people in already. Um, we're going to talk about managed payments. Um, we're also going to talk about eBay's new uh, giving away more listings if you're under managed payments. Um, now, I've gotten a bunch of people, and somebody's actually shown me one of these. Uh, eBay is telling people they'll get 50 bucks if they sign up for managed payments. Now, I don't think that's exactly just for those of us who did the right thing and signed up right away if you want to continue to sell and giving those who are just don't want to do it to the end 50 free bucks unless they're going to give to everybody. But um, it's a done deal as far as I can say. There's nothing that's going to change managed payments being initiated. Uh, so, I mean... If you want to sell on the site, just sign up for it and be done with it. I mean, that's my personal take. I know there's a lot of people have problems giving out your, your personal information, um, Social Security, bank account, and stuff like that. PayPal has your bank account. I mean, at least ours. They've had it for a very, very long time. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. If, if somebody really wants to find your personal information, I don't think there's much that could stop them. You not putting it on a site is not really going to stop somebody in my book. Um, you know, I've taken the internet classes for safety, safety plus and net plus and all that too. You can hack and get into pretty much anything through various, various ways. You don't really need somebody to put in that information. If you just saw the big hacks that just happened, I think it, what it was, Bill Gates, um, Elon Musk, I mean, a whole bunch of people's accounts were hacked with a Bitcoin thing the other day. And we're talking big accounts and stuff. I know it was Twitter, but still. Uh, nothing's really safe to some extent. I, I've signed up. I signed up for quite a while ago. We have it already on another account. I haven't had the issues um, that everybody's talking about. Now, I did notice while I was getting ready, somebody made a comment um, on the feed here already about, I think it, maybe it was Duncan. Um, hey, Duncan as well. Uh, let's call it some names and I'll, just, I'll get up to where Duncan made that comment. I'm pretty sure it was Duncan. Nathan, how you doing? Um... Thank you very kindly for the, the nice words. Shopify-wise, for Patreon, you're going to see some more in there. We're going to list. We're going to do some other stuff in, in there, too. CSV file, I haven't got the, the final one back again, so I don't know where I stand on that. It might be in there. I just haven't had a chance to look in the last two days. Marky's a little bit under the weather, and um, I've kind of canceled a bunch of stuff for the last almost two days now. So just FYI... Um, I've had a horrendous headache, too, since, of course, I haven't slept because of Marky, so, you know, no big deal. Um, so I will be going into some more. It might be in there. If it's in there, I'm going to throw something together. For Patreon, and I do see quite a few folks in Patreon, I just put a video up like 20 minutes before this live show started. If I have time after the show and everything's going okay, I'm going to try to get to all the questions um, and emails. I did answer about half of them before the show started as well. I ran out of time. Uh, so I got to most of them. I only think I have like a couple, three maybe emails in there left at this point. So I will get to those either tonight or tomorrow for those on Patreon. Videos up and Sunday is probably going to be a live show as long as everybody's healthy and things are looking okay here um, on Patreon. Hey Cornelius, how are you doing? Deb right below went to sign up for managed payments and the message said you will receive an email when it's time for you to sign up. Yeah, they're doing it in stages. This is like the third or fourth group, maybe, or something like that. They're supposed to do another group in December, which I'm happy to say I'm not in the, the fourth quarter one. I'd rather get it all done and get everything worked out before fourth quarter starts. In fact, I just got an email about managed payments today uh, through eBay um, saying they're going to give me... They actually gave me a date. I think it's between July 27th and the 30th 
it's supposed to activate for anybody who had this grouping of them. And again, they're picking them off in, in groupings so many at a time. Um, and going on to the second part of the title, store listings, the, the totals are changing. So if you sign up for managed payments, and like us, we have an anchor store, instead of 50,000 listings, and, and, and for the foreseeable future, it's going to be 75,000 listings if you have the managed payments. Now, the way they have it worded in there, it's almost like some people aren't going to have to do managed payments, even though that's what the impression has been all along. And I also noticed that the statement that they made in there says thousands of people have already signed up. It doesn't say tens of thousands, which kind of troublesome that you know, it's only into the thousands. Some of the wording in that email they sent out too. If you get it, look at the email. It mentions date. The dates are all wrong in that email too, because it mentions on such and such a date, and you know it's already come and gone. So. Uh, the whole point of it is the email uh, has some errors in it. I don't know what's correct in it, but the gist on it is the dates, 27th through the 30th, if you signed up and were required to by that point um, is when they roll in. Again, I would far rather just be done with it. It's going to happen. I'm not giving up eBay, even with the, the bad news and the federal indictments and all that. I, I, I don't... Uh, the, the site itself is good. Let's just put it that way. Management is always an issue with many types of businesses. So I'm not paying any attention to the management. I'm just worrying about the, the functionality and getting my stuff up, getting my stuff sold and, and going forward. I know there's a lot of people who are going to drop off eBay. I get a lot of comments and some of them pretty nasty about me saying to sign up for it. But e either you're going to sell on the site or you're not. If you're going to sell on the site, you got to sign up for managed payments. You know, end of story from what I can see. You know, I don't see how there's a way to to get around it because it's going to be company wide. They're already rolling it out across the globe now. It's going out to several other countries, so it's not going to be a a, a thing they'll try and maybe it'll go and maybe it won't. It it's done. They they financially wise they're going to do it. Even if it's just financially wise, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and again, we get a good chunk of change from eBay. Mind you, it's not as much as it used to be, uh, but still, you know, I don't give up funds uh, over something like this. You know, as a bigger business, we do have to share banking and stuff like that information anyway, accountants and things like that. So, I mean, you have insurance. I do have insurance. I have a BOP, which does cover, you know, fraudulent uh, issues with our bank and stuff like that. And I have business accounts with the bank, so some of that is, is covered as well through other policies that we have. There's insurance for everything. If you've got a, a business and this is your only source of income, I say this all the time, get a BOP, business owner's policy. It covers you know pretty much any kind of loss that you could have. A theft is, is uh, could also be you know like a, a digital theft. It's all covered under my BOP. It covers my inventory if something happened, a fire, act of God, or whatever the case may be. There is no real exemptions other than, um, geez, I can't think of one. Some of them have a pandemic exemption, so just be careful on which ones you get. Uh, that would be my best guess. But again. You're going to have to put the information in somewhere. At some point, every company is going to want banking information. It's going that way. I mean, you share it with Amazon and you know quite a few other sites. Everything's direct deposited, all my money from Amazon and stuff. So if you do Amazon, you're already doing it. If you do some of the other sites, that's or something. Bank account information is everywhere. So you know, having insurance is the key. So even if it does get hacked, which so many things do, you're at least covered. But the new totals vary, too, based on your store. So depending on your store level, they're, they're different now. If you're under managed payments after July 30th. There's an email for that. I thought about pulling it up, but everybody should have gotten it if you have a store. Uh, that's what literally I was told as well. I did talk to somebody from eBay today um, about some other things. Now, uh, let's hop back down here because I want to get to that question about refunds, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Webba Lubba Dubba, how you doing? I signed up last Friday, October mail today, saying I'll be moved over on the 20th. Wow, you're sooner than me and you just signed up. That's weird. Might go by how many listings you have. I don't know. Maybe you have more than me. I don't really know how many. Uh, hey, Duncan, as I said before, have to be quick to the first show. Yep, I'm going to list a mega rare 4D Queen Vic. Oh, QV is Queen Vic. Uh, 4D is the denomination, if you're not sure. Stamp catalog is 12,000 pounds, which is probably, what, 13, 
thousand US or fourteen, I think maybe right now. Um, I love Queen Victoria items, Victorian period in general. As those of you who see what I sell, I sell a lot of um, Victorian items. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing this evening, Aaron? Video up in Patreon as well. Paper junking. I am always paper junking. I literally, like, always. I can't go anywhere without looking at something. Even if it's we're at the mall, I still find stuff to source at the mall or something like that. Of course, I haven't been to the mall since the pandemic, but when we do go to the mall, I source while we're out shopping or dinner or something. Hey, Jeffrey, how's Jeffrey D. doing this evening? Yeah, I haven't seen Hustle and Grind on for a little while, but there's Calgary back in the house. Yeah, I... He's mentioning um, he's been crushing it on eBay. eBay sales are still very solid, regardless of the news cycle, the Fed issues and indictment. All that stuff I'm putting behind me. We're just moving on. The site, again, separate those running eBay from the site. The site itself has excellent opportunities to sell your wares. Whatever you sell, it's the, the number two for most people who do Amazon. If you do eBay, Amazon's your number two probably, but... You know, in general, eBay and Amazon are the number one and number two sites, you know, to sell on. It's it's just the way it is. Like it or not, if you disgruntled at eBay or whatever the case may be, some of it's surely justified. But the point is, if you're making money, don't make it based on your personal opinion. Make it based on your business. Look at your business. Look at the numbers. Don't do something stupid just because you're upset with the site for changing things around. Anybody, any site can change and affect your business in, in a, just a snap of a finger. So roll with it. You know, that's all I can say. That, that's my personal opinion. We're rolling with it. We're moving into it. You know, I've got my other plans. We know where we stand with eBay, as I've said before, and we know where we're going with our company. So, you know, set yourself up a ploy, a plan, stick to it. Who cares what's going on in the background and stuff? If the site's still working for you, the management means nothing. They could change it tomorrow, so don't worry. Just pay attention to the, to the the goal, and your goal is fourth quarter. I, I I hopefully can't express that enough. Like most people in here, if you're new, you may not think fourth quarter at this point. But man, I thought about fourth quarter for this year, last year in October. So you know we were already putting stuff in paper and signing and buying and putting deposits down and stuff. So, you know you got to be on the ball. And and now I think it's more essential with what we did ahead of time because if I would have waited the competition is going to be huge trying to get deals now you know for big mass quantity of stuff I should say so let's hop back over here I don't want to ramble too much live long and prosper most definitely I just watched uh, Star Trek um, Into Darkness um, I like the new Star Treks actually I'm sorry that they're not making anymore I know one of them has passed but excellent ones uh, where are we going with this? Uh, Greg, how are you doing, Greg? Another week has passed. Just seems like yesterday. Looking forward to this week's show. Well, thank you very kindly. Glad to have you in. Uh, and I think here is Duncan's. Uh, managed payments. Unable to send error, uh, refund error may be caused because eBay switched off the payment gateway from PayPal to eBay. Now, I've thought that before I even saw it. And I've seen articles now or a, a, several posts and comments, especially on some Reddits, about that exact same thing. And that's my opinion. I think, you know, some people there are having a clue, as we already know in many cases, that um, they just shut it off, switch it over to manage payments, and don't even think that you still have to be running through PayPal at the same time. Just like um, them forcing you to manage payments, if they can keep it on so you can refund through PayPal while you're still in managed payments, that should mean that you can still do PayPal at the same time without going through managed payments from my thinking again cuz i've got you know some it experience and knowledge i really can't see that you wouldn't be able to do that so if they really wanted to fix the issues with like coins adults and all that kind of adult, adult category magazines they could do it you know i just don't think they want to honestly at this point i know i had uh, gotten into a discussion with several people about the banned items under the managed payments until they fix it they may never fix it. I've had somebody else point an article to me on a Reddit post that says that um, as a potential to sell off, and this is this is hearsay. I, this doesn't mean much. I'm not taking it too hard to it. But the last one I would have blown off was the one over the, the Fed cases. It turned out to be true. So maybe this is true. Maybe it's not. Um, if you look hard enough, you'll probably find this. But they're, they're talking about um, the board was planning on 
instigating this to cut off those categories because they're a risk factor over a buyout for the company. It's talking about that eBay, it, the board of directors, and again, we know that some of the board of directors do this kind of stuff because the guy, the the I can't think what the company's name is. Somebody will think about it. But they literally ran out, I think it was Bass Pro Shop, they crushed and killed the company basically and forced the buyout and stuff. That's who's running eBay. So it kind of makes sense that uh, somebody might not want to invest a lot of money into a company with these categories that could um, be foreseen as um, not investable enough or higher risk. So if they get rid of the risk factors, it may be open. And also I was told in this same article, or at least the article alludes to the fact that them cutting off PayPal, again, is another factor to make it easier to sell the company. Again, I'm not saying they're going to sell it. I'm not trying to insinuate that, but I've read and seen a ton of articles now talking about just that. You know, and it, it makes sense from a logistics standpoint and from a board of directors standpoint that you sell it off, you get a huge stock, and then who cares? You let the company go and you're done with it. That's what they did with Bass Pro and all this other stuff. Maybe there's truth to it, maybe not. But I just want to put that out there because there are Reddits with very detailed stuff that almost looks like some internal documentation, possibly, that somebody got. Again, there was Reddits from last year about the federal cases, those seven indictments, there was reddits about that word for word that described the whole thing what happened back in October and November back then. So maybe there's some truth to this. Again, if they consolidate and remove PayPal, there's no other company to have to work with. It's all inside eBay, so eBay can do the final decision, so there wouldn't be any need to work out any sale with a potential uh, money processor like PayPal. It'll all be condensed into one area, one little package. And again, they've sold off StubHub. They're going to sell off the classifieds and the whole works. So again, it's now coming to the point where it's possible that there is some plan and this whole thing has been some ploy from the board of directors to get some major stock back on it. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to say that's going on. I just know for a fact there's a ton of articles saying that right this second. And again, I, I stopped... I didn't used to think so much or pay attention to those until several people, and I've now since gotten more, have pointed out that last year everybody knew about the federal cases coming down the road, which was kind of like a shocker to me because I would think it was just some conspiracy. So again, maybe there is something truthful to eBay trying to sell it off, and this whole thing's been a ploy this whole time. The head board of directors are the people from, um, geez, I wish I could remember the name of the company, but uh, they're still there. They were there when the last CEO stepped down. You know, they're, they're, they're um, vulture capitalists, basically. I've got two uh, laptops open, so I won't lose chat, just FYI. So if you see me keep looking over to one side, I'm just trying to keep up on chats here. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? Um, but Duncan, I do think that could be a, a possibility, what Duncan says on the gateway from PayPal to eBay. Uh, Suzanne, how are you doing this evening, Suzanne? Bob, Mr. Hale is in the house, too. And I got Marty right below. Hello, Marty. Hope everybody is doing well in sunny Florida. It's felt like Florida up here. We had like 95 degree weather up until like a day ago. Then it started to rain and it's like 82. And that would like at, uh, I want to say it was like 740 in the morning and it was already like 87 outside. This is in Ohio, mind you, so. Get some KFC for lunch today, yeah. A little greasy for me, but I do love KFC, I have to say. I just don't like to eat it. Um, Greg Murray, I had to re-log back into eBay yesterday, which I never have to do. As soon as I logged in, I was prompted to enter in my debit card info, and that was it. Nothing else was not informed as to why. I would have probably signed all off, cleared everything in my computer and cleared cash and then tried to come back in to make sure it wasn't like some kind of hack, just personally. I've never seen that. Never heard of that either, uh, Greg, at all. Again, I have backup information for everything. Maybe you changed your card. Maybe there was an expiration or they had an old card and they needed something to keep your account live. But they should tell you. I've never seen that at all. I would always take a screenshot too if if that's the case to a snippet you can do snippet on on if you're on windows and it'll you can cut any part of the screen anytime you want so if you go if you don't know what that is you can just go to the search 
uh, go down, uh, hit the Windows button, hit the search, and type in SNP, S-N-I-P, and you can screenshot any of that. If you're, I know a lot of people tell me their, their print screen button doesn't work, so anyway. There's a way to fix that, too. Uh, Shane, how are you doing this evening, Shane? Gail, right below it. Weebles, yes, again, the, the next Weeble video is going to be up for Patreon. It should be this weekend with a tentative um, date for YouTube on Tuesday, I think. We've got Dom in the house. Hey, Primetime Treasure Hunter. Good to, good to see you in the house. Hopefully Dom is doing well. Back to work. Annie, right below. Hey, Annie, how are you doing? We'll be doing something else with Primetime Treasure Hunter soon as well, too. We already discussed something for a near future date, which we will throw out there when uh, we get everything closer to it. Hudson Resells. Again, if you haven't, though, checked out Primetime Treasure Hunter, I would honestly recommend going to Dom's channel. He is probably the best friend of the show here. Most people who are subscribers to me know Dom as well, too. So similar content. We get along very well, so... Uh, Pat Dees, how are you doing, Mr. Dees? Hope everything is going well for you as well. Did I just miss Hudson Resale? Good evening, Don. Love the behind-the-scenes footage. Thanks. Uh, if you're talking about the, the Weebles video, yeah, I have another, I think, 15-minute video that will just be thrown up on Patreon after the next Weeble video. So it has outtakes and some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Totally different uh, feel to the, the next video here, too. We go into a lot of details for the Weebles, you'll get to see everything that came in it and, and some other things. You're, this next video, I think, is the one, too, that has the insides, what, what's inside a Weeble, a complete working model of it that we put together and everything else like that, too. So, uh, anyway, Weeble Theater, you'll see another one of those in there. Uh, Linda, how are you doing, Linda? Hope everything is well. Hey, Karen, how's Karen doing this evening? Marilyn S., how are you doing? Paula Hoffner, how are you doing as well? First time I made your live show. Well, glad to have you, and thank you very kindly as well. Mantique, hello, how are you doing? Kathy from Australia, right down below. Hope you are doing well also, Kathy. Yeah, Marty's in Florida, so I believe that's a different time zone, maybe. We're in Eastern Standard Time, though, to Eastern Daylight Time. You must be the next one over. Uh, where are we at? Andrea, how are you doing this evening? Kansas City. Now, I don't think I've been in Kansas City. I've been through part of Kansas, driving through once, but I don't recall ever getting near Kansas City. Oh, well, you're Kansas City, Missouri. You're probably in. My bad. Uh, CDL Picker, how are you doing? Columbus, Ohio. We do get down to Columbus. Obviously, we haven't been this year at all with the pandemic and everything, but um, we've done Christmas in Hocking Hills and Thanksgiving in dead winter. It's really neat down there, honestly. Grand Canyon. I have been to Grand Canyon once as a kid. I was like eight. Probably don't remember much of it. Hang on. My feed's working on this other one, but it's still lagging. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I'm going to try to get to some questions. I'm going to have to cut it off or try to cut it off at 8. Um, again, my, my wife's uh, feeling not so well right now. So, uh, Hang on. I'm sorry. I just clicked the wrong spot and it bounced me all over. Uh, Dr. Full, PaperPal isn't a company that did horrendous things against individuals. No, that's completely true. Pa uh, PayPal, twice before, somebody has gotten my bank account number and ran some char or charge card, not bank accounts, so to speak. My PayPal card, mind you. And both times, PayPal notified me and locked my card within like 20 minutes of it happening. Um, so there was no more charges able to go through. Now, mind you, I did ha get a phone call to the house and stuff like that, and you had to respond a certain way and all this other stuff, but I was very happy with what they did. Even though the the person who ripped us off on those two times, they got $400 out, which is the max, PayPal immediately refunded that money right back into my account without even the investigation starting at that point to cover us, which was you know great. I I've not had an issue... Once before, they I think they put a hold on a payment or 
Jeez, maybe our account. I was transferring. That's what it was. I was transferring a set amount. And one other time, I listed uh, a type of a button, a, a uniform button in there, and they, the some alarm went off at at PayPal. I understand that one. Um, the locking on the the transfer was a little weird because I've sent. I think the transfer was like twenty five hundred dollars. I've sent way, way, way more than that from my PayPal to a personal bank account. So it was weird that all of a sudden something sprang. They said it was a random thing, but. You know, it didn't seem too random to me. Yeah, PayPal I haven't had the issues with. Yeah, Annie's excited about managed payments. I, I'm, I'm gonna. It's gonna cost us more money if I sit there and look at the breakdown. Just by sheer fact that many people buy multiple items from us. They've worked into this now, from what I see, too, that you're they're required to pay for it, so you can't let them sit there and hold it. So there's no way for people to combine it unless they throw it in their cart all at once. And, and half the time, the calculations seem to be wrong whenever I, I do a cart like that and somebody buys from, from us. The, the shipping calculator is always off, and the charges are wrong, and I've had many different things. Or somebody will buy some things through an offer to a watcher, and they'll pay for it, and then they'll see something else. And then what happens is I'm paying another thirty cents for every item they see after that as well. I know you can negate it and add some, you know, add a thirty cent, um, which I have done in some some cases, thirty cent handling fee. Nothing wrong with that. It just goes in and raises the shipping a little bit. But um, you know, the whole package after total cost of item is is included. So it's iffy. Some people will save money, I would imagine, but for us, it's probably going to cost us more money. You know, and we're not getting anything more for that. I'm getting less because I won't be able to sell coins and stuff like that anymore either. And that also covers tokens. Um, if you saw my pick video just the other day with the 50 pounds of paper and photos and stuff, I could have picked up a couple hundred nice tokens. But I wasn't, I was hesitant because I really kind of wonder if eBay plans on just getting rid of the coin section. I know it's a lot of money. Maybe they got something else planned that we don't know about, but, but, I don't see any rush. Again, they've been doing managed payments since last year. They've had a year to get that situated. It hasn't happened. I know they did say they got Charity back online, and Charity's supposed to be on there, but the only one I care about is the money and the adult stuff because, again, I don't sell modern-day adult stuff. I sell the stuff as borderline just pinup, so I don't sell any of the, the adult stuff that's not vintage. Let's just put it that way. I sell, like, stag-related items, 8 millimeter films and... Um, 1950s and some 60s um, pinup style, more adult magazine. I know people have issues with that kind of stuff. That's fine and dandy. I don't. It doesn't bother me that somebody thinks that's not just or whatever. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But the point is, it's they're legal items. There's nothing wrong with them. And in some sites, you can sell those on Amazon. Now, I'm not going to call out someone's name, but a patron and I have been discussing uh, magazines specifically and stuff. And through some some comments that he made, I've looked into this, and people do sell what eBay bans on Amazon without issue. So I was really kind of surprised. But again, I, I talked about discussing and meeting with, with fellow resellers and stuff like that and sharing certain things. I wouldn't have known that had somebody not shared that with me. That's just a couple of weeks ago. I didn't have a clue you could do that. Um, again, it depends. There's some things you got to do and stuff like that. But, but the point of it is, there, there, there is places to sell it. It's just stupid for eBay to get rid of stuff. That's anyway. Not trying to rant on eBay today. I, I'm well above anything like that. We're, we're at this point. My business is all that matters, and I sure as heck hope everybody out there is, is thinking of this from a business standpoint. Separate. There, there should be two of yous. Everybody watching this, there should be two of you. You should have a personal side and a business side. If it's a business decision you're making, turn off the personal you and, and think of it from a business standpoint. That's that's hard for people to do sometimes if you haven't like been a, a manager or something or haven't haven't had to deal with stuff business wise. It's hard sometimes to separate that. Y you got to do it. I, I I don't I don't know how else to s express it. Um, let let's just give you one quick story here. Just just to give you an idea, now, I, I've been in regional, I've been a general manager for many years. I hired and fired people. There's times where your emotions like, can take the, take, get the better of you in a business decision, which, which is something that's hard to do. I had somebody who had cancer working under me, and uh, people think this is a bad story, but this, this is life. Um, the person had cancer. My grandmother died of cancer, so uh, not wishing any ill anything on anybody with anything like that. The person was, I was doing everything I could. I went bend over backwards for this this lady and did everything I could. 
but she would never tell me when she had scheduled appointments. She wouldn't show up. She wouldn't call. She left me empty-handed. I don't know how many times. I wrote her up. I wrote her up. I even waited. Wrote her up. I mean, well past me able to terminate her, and I had to terminate her at the end of the day. And she was crying, and it was an emotional thing. And it was about all I could do from not being bothered by the situation. But again, it was a business decision. She was hurting me personally as well as everybody else who worked that day. All I had asked was for her to tell us what was going on. I'm sorry, my dog's down here, and every time he comes down here, I can feel the hair floating. But so you know. To some people, they wouldn't be able to do that, but it, it came down to business, and that was like tough decisions you have to make. You know, stuff like that happens, and, and separate. You have to be able to separate the personal aspect from the business aspect. From the business aspect, doing eBay is a good thing. It's it's a money maker for us, and I mean a big money maker. Again, it's like half of our income, maybe it's it maybe a little lower now, but the point of it is that's a good chunk of change estimate what we were probably doing you can imagine it's a good chunk of change it's enough for uh you know i'm not going to point out any numbers but it, it's a good chunk of change i would be stupid I'd, it, it just wouldn't make any financial sense any business sense for me to not do ebay over this or not go on to manage payments we've done it i know it works i use it in both ends of it we use it as a as one of our stores and we also use it when we buy merchandise and stuff if you buy the boxes off of ebay even though you get the boxes for free you still got to pay the tax on those boxes. You're using managed payments to pay those taxes. That's a managed payment account. That's one that has managed payments and has had it. And I don't have any issues. I think it will be a good thing, as Annie's saying, for those with bookkeeping and stuff like that. I do think that'll be a good plus. It'll be a good plus for those who haven't done major accounting or having to keep track of stuff because you can bring in GoDaddy and all this other stuff as well with it. So, yeah, it does give you more options. Sure, they could have probably done it without doing all this. PayPal could have instigated something. There are more options. Uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. This could change again, but I don't think managed payments is going away. It's going to be a huge amount of money coming in for eBay once everybody's on managed payments, and they're not going to give up the money. It, 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 regardless of you, me, or anybody else, whatever anybody who's selling on site has to do with this, they're not going to give up the money. One thing about, you know, corporate America, they don't give up money unless they are forced to. So it's done. Um, but again, you are getting more listings, which at least they're giving you something. Because again, I'm probably paying more. So I'm going to lose lose um, items to sell. I can't sell. And I'm going to pay more. And, you know, it's, it's not, I don't mind the having to do PayPal. And, uh, you know, I don't mind that. It's it's easy. You just throw it on an Excel spreadsheet. At the end of the day, it comes to a P&L sheet. I got one piece of paper that has every dime that went through my business at the end of the day. It's it's not much to it if you've done this for a while. Again, there's accountants you can have, and we turn over a single sheet of paper to our accountant, you know, and if they need something, I've got receipts all bagged by month and all the whole works for everything. I've got files. I've got a, a DVD of all of the, the, the stuff that we've bought. I've got receipts that we scan. All that stuff's done. Uh, where are we at here? Uh, they ask you for a picture of your driver's license to prove it was me. That's standard. I've had to do that many times. Um, like if you ever get a passport, you got to send them if you do it through there. you got to send them your actual full-fledged certified copy of like your birth certificate, your marriage certificate, and stuff like that too. You have to literally give them a copy of it. Um, I don't mind the, the driver's license. If you do Amazon, you got to do that too if you didn't know that. Um, I think Etsy, I think we did that for Etsy. Most of the bigger sites, I've I've had to do something like that. And I think I did that um, even on YouTube, I think, here on my YouTube business, I think. Or Google. Maybe it was Google Analyticals or something. But I've done it on half the sites that we're on. That doesn't bother me. I don't care who knows. I mean, somebody can find out who you are anyway, you know. Let's see here. Uh, good evening, Leo. How are you doing this evening, Mr. Smith? Naomi, how's it going? Seattle is in the house. I have been through Seattle once before. I'd love to have spent some time there, but usually when we've traveled or I've traveled like that, it was just me and I was business. I was working. I worked in California on and off for a few days here, a week there and stuff. Hey, Daryl, how are you doing this evening, Daryl? Good to see you in the house. Hope everyone is doing well. 
again for those who are just joining us if you're in patreon a new video went up um it's uh brochures and stuff like that and then uh there will probably be a live show and this weekend you'll probably see i think i posted a note on all that too i think you'll probably see the weebles video up this weekend for uh patreon first You have not received, Dom has not received one. Have you signed up for it, Dom, at all? Because I received one a while ago. I know they're doing it in stages. Now, somebody told me after he, and again, I don't know. I didn't do the numbers on this. It didn't really matter to me. But he was talking, and he's been tracking, like, how many people and who signed up and what. He told me that the longer time people are the ones they were hitting first. I don't know if that's true, but I have no idea. Yeah, Kathy, I slapped that on you there. Thank you, Kathy. I'll probably hand out some more. I, I messed up on a couple when I tried to do it the other day, so I just, I'll put some more mods out there, too. Yeah, here's Mary Harris. Uh, eBay said they'd get, or giving me $50 credit for registering on the 9th for managed payments, but so far it's not showing up on my account. I would bet it won't show up till next next um, on your your bill when your bill comes out. It'll probably say a fifty dollar credit. It's usually what they do on stuff like that. Again, I've never received a single solitary thing that says I'm going to get a dime for signing up. So if you if you signed up right away, from what I, I understand, you're not getting that, or at least it doesn't look like it. Nor did they tell us. I I don't think they should benefit somebody for waiting. Again, no disrespect to marry anybody else. I waited the first time they did it when you had a chance to get in, so I completely understand not trusting me of all people. I don't trust eBay any more than I can throw them, but I still love the platform, so don't get me wrong. Uh, let's see here. I'm signed up, and they are still asking me to sign up. You're going to get those. It's a form email from what I understand. I My same one says, please sign up and all the stuff. No $50 comment or nothing like that, but... Um, it says sign up by such and such and, and things like that on it. But again, mine's already been done. I wasn't going to wait if I'm going to have to do it. My, I'm working long term. I'm not looking to see what's going to play out by the end of the year. We're in this for the long run. I, I don't plan on doing anything else for the rest of my life other than reselling in the the internet and doing this kind of stuff. It's made for me. This is my calling. So I'm not planning on doing anything. You know, I've done it for this long, ten years now, full time. If I, I can keep it going the way it is, there's just it's a no brainer. I have no interest in going working for anybody else ever like that. Uh, Daryl signed up too. Does it help you say if you're interested? I'm not sure. I, I would will in the bat. They're just literally doing it in stages. And if you're you're in their group, they probably already have a list of who gets it when based on some determining factor. Um, if they're smart, they're doing the big accounts now and waiting for the smaller ones that would be less of an, of an issue to do them later on in fourth quarter. I don't want it done in fourth quarter. That's my biggest concern here is keeping it all away from fourth quarter. Um, again, they, they've done so many changes in fourth quarter. Last year, October, they did it right there at the beginning of fourth quarter. Uh, you know, it's it's terrible. Amazon always does them in the summer when it's the slowest time. Always, always. Anything that goes on with Amazon, I always see it in the summer. Always. It's never, ever, ever in a time where it would be essentially an issue if something happened, ever. Neither are any other sites I deal with. I was ex going back and forth with eBay because someone opened a, a um, not-as-described return case on us today. Now, mind you, they made a statement said I didn't tell them about an issue, and it's clearly, they didn't look at the condition statement. So I didn't want to get dinged, so I reached out to eBay uh, for business. I could call them, but I hate this stupid conversation. I can just type my info in and be done. I don't have to sit there and wait on the phone. Um, sometimes I'll call if it's something I really want. Again, through this whole time, pretty much, other than like two weeks, if you have an anchor store, you can still call them. And I've been able to call eBay for like two or three months, even through this, just FYI. And yes, that is how it still is working. If you have an anchor store, you basically are rerouted to somebody's house, their personal phone. So when I talk to people at eBay, I'm really talking to them at their own house. I've talked to enough to know that that's how it works, but... Anyway, with the return case, the person then came back after he tried to say, no, it wasn't listed. He apparently went back in and then said, I'm sorry, and he even offered to send $10 cash for the mix-up and everything else, which, again, I wasn't interested in that. eBay was going to said, I'm not going to do anything. We can't do anything, blah, 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 their usual, I'm not going to help you kind of thing. It's not going to hurt your account. If it does, then we'll look at it. But the point is now this person's even said, hey, yeah, I made a mistake in filing it that way in eBay's email. And I bet you a million bucks they won't 
uh, hold that from dinging my account still. The, just the response is just on something simple like that is crazy because, again, I, the guy even said he made the mistake in an email to me through eBay. I'll bet you a million bucks eBay's still not going to jump in on that one. You know, I told him I'm not going to waste any more time with you because that was my answer, what I expected would happen because usually they blow it off. Uh, again, it's a principal issue with me, again. This decisions like that that are why people get aggravated with eBay. Uh, CJ, how are you doing this evening? Thank you very kindly. You get extra listings for non-stores, starter stores, and basic stores, even if you don't have managed payments. Now, I'll have to go back and read it because the first one I got like two or three days ago said that if you don't go in and manage payments, you're not going to get, like, if, if I'm not in managed payments as an anchor store, I only get 50,000 listings. If I'm in managed payments with the anchor store, I get 75,000. I know for sure that's what it said on my my uh, uh, message. So I would, I don't know which one's what you got on the email. I'd have to see that specific. But I know on mine, it says if I don't have managed payments, I only get 50,000. Um, after July 30th, managed payments, I get the 75. That's what mine said. Oh, let's see here. Shane, many people are saying uh, there are glitches with managed payments, re sign ups and processing. I've heard that now since they started it last year. I haven't had many issues that I can think of. Um, I don't, the most of the issues I hear are getting paid. Literally, it's, people are taking a week, ten days, and there's issues with it showing up and all this other stuff. I don't, I don't do it like most people. I don't need to have the money out of there, so I don't. We've got a, a big. Well, I don't want to shut out numbers, but we we've got a, a account. So I've got accounts for purchasing and this and that and paying fees. We got an account that just is for our accountant, so we can put money to pay like workman's comp and. You know, another one for um, end of the year taxes for the accountant as well. So I, I don't worry about stuff like that. We always have funds there. So if you're working from item to item to pay your bills, that may be an issue. I'm not going to make light of that because I've had a lot of people tell me that it's been a nightmare trying to get payouts done at any reasonable time. And even after they said, hey, you'll have a payment, there's been holdups and errors and issues Again, I haven't seen any of these in person. Um, I've asked a couple people, and I haven't haven't got a response back. Who said it was happening, and they could show me? I I can't show you anything. Cause I don't have anything. Nothing on my end is having the issues. Um, I, if I find an error, or somebody shows me or sends me a screenshot, I'll be happy to share that as well on something like that. Um, again, the money's showing up. It's just there's mega delays coming from what I can see. For some people, again, I haven't had any issues. I can't complain about the process. Let me just shout this out here. I know somebody will probably say, no, that's not the case. But in my personal opinion, from doing Internet all over the place, we're on multiple sites. I think it's like 11, almost 12 complete sites that we're business on for many years, 20 plus years, 10 years full time. The, the payment thing will probably be a plus for us come fourth quarter. Because there's people that don't like PayPal, even though I don't have an issue with it. There's a lot of people who have back in the day. There's a lot of people who don't want to do anything else or they get money back from their charge card and they want that, that credit you know, for a, a ch bonus check back. There's all kinds of reasons why people will want to pay with another thing. Apple Pay's in there. I know people have issues. I'm not an Apple person, but I think it will be a plus and will allow more people to purchase from you one time or you know even those non-registered for the site because they'll have more options to pay I, I truthfully think that will be a plus to some extent now if the overall traffic keeps going down it was down 6.2 percent from the prior year on ebay of what they sold that's going to be the, the the huge the the deciding factor on how well we do if they can't draw more people into the site it's not going to be any benefit to us that i can see to to do it this way for us anyway we need more people on the site buying. That's what we need. We need eBay to, to go all over and, and bring those people in. The, the ads, the commercials, the radios, I know they're all over the place, but are they the right ones? It's nothing. It doesn't attract my attention. It's not an eye keeper. It's not something that's, hey, that's cute. I remember certain commercials, and I, I actually included one in one of my videos the other day. It looks like I may have frozen up. I am sorry. It looks like I am frozen. I do know what happened, so hang on just a second here. I will fix that. 
Uh, it's a podcast temp temporarily, so give me just a second here, and we will get me moving again. Uh, hang on just a second. There we go. Sorry about that. I bump a wire with my glass, and that's what happens. I need to move it around. Um, I totally lost my train of thought now on that, too. Uh, hang on. I'm going to have to change topic. As my, it totally got me off guard there. Uh, I think that as a stockholder, the managed payments will help eBay to move up their profits. Oh, they'll move up their profits, but again, they're getting them off our backs. They're not getting them from increasing or improving the site in any way, shape, or form. Managed payments is not going to improve the structural or how the site works. All that's going to do is throw some more money in there. Yeah, we may sell some more items if they can get more people to the site. Uh, but it's it's not a, a structural change that's going to make the site work smoother and stop the errors that I get constantly. It's not us, or it's not you, it's us. Um, I get that error constantly if I'm on the eBay platform to list. And, and that's a, a, it's a nuisance. If I'm sending out offers through eBay, which I try never to do anymore these days, uh, it, it's a it's a tiring nuisance because maybe every 10th offer that I send out, I don't know if it went out because I keep getting a, we looked everywhere, it's not uh, you, it's us, constantly. So I'll send it, I'll hit the send button and that error pops up. So then I got to, you know, go backwards and, and check out to see if it even sent it. It's it's so annoying. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't mind. If I had to pay more, I would be happy if it meant that there was going to be more business, if I was going to get something out of it. Don't keep raising the prices or, or doing these. This is Managed payment's nothing more than a cash grab. That's that's all it is. It's, it's, they're cutting out the middleman to take all the profits for themselves. Of course, it's going to increase their bottom line. Last year, how they increased or made any more money was through promoted listings. They didn't make it from selling more items. They Last year eBay sold 6.2% less items on the site, less items sold. So instead of selling 100% of what they normally do, they sold 94.8% of that. They, they sold less items. The year before, it was 2% down. So if you add up those two years, it's 6 point some odd percent, 6.2% down over a two-year time frame. That's, that's the factor that they need to improve. You know, the, the the radio commercials aren't going to do it. Most young people don't listen to the radio. I don't even listen to the radio. I haven't turned on a radio in I don't know how long. I, it's all on XM for us. You know, my favorite hall of all times is, is why I've never even turned on the radio anymore. An XM radio is, is like my favorite hall. I've used that thing. I've had lifetime service for three ninety nine dollars at the discount on... I used my 30% off at Sabres years ago. Our Sabres hasn't been open for two years, so... I've had this thing for six years, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know. It's, we've had it so long. For for two ninety nine or three ninety nine, I've had service. So, I don't listen to the radio. I don't watch regular TV either. Those are pointless ads in my book, as well as popping the ads into your mailbox through Yahoo or Google, wherever you're getting your mail. I see them in my mailbox as an as a paid promoted ad. Amazon's is always on top of theirs, though. You know, I don't pay any attention to that. So I could block it all out. I could literally ad block all of that out as well. You know. Anyway, uh, uh, Mary, I'm signed up now and just concentrated on list, list, list as usual. Mary, is a BOP expensive though? It depends on your, your inventory. When we first got a BOP, the first BOP I ever had was $95 a month. And that covered, I want to say at that time, it was 150000 in inventory of, of ours. So at cost, $150,000, we would have gotten reimbursed on, on it. So I wouldn't have lost anything on inventory. It also covers, for that same price, it covered all of my equipment, nine laptops, scanners, cameras, like five grand just in camera equipment alone. So it covers everything in that aspect of it. it covers my shelves, the totes that they're come that they come in and the whole works. Again, these I've got proof of everything because I turn in all my receipts. Well, I don't turn them in. I turn them in myself and put them in an envelope. So I have copies of those too. You can scan them so if something happens. Um, best way to scan receipts, I'll just shoot this out real quick, is I tape them all to a sheet. So for every month or whatever the case, whatever sheet I'm doing, all the ones from June will be on several sheets, and I'll scan those in, and boom. If you tape them on one end, it'll go through a, a feed scanner. Just FYI. We've done that way for years. Um, but no, a BOP is not expensive. You can get 
uh, like a million dollars in coverage of your inventory. I don't know where everybody's at in inventory, but we've got, like, if you count it up, the inventory listed and unlisted, it's like over three million in inventory we have. That's covered for in, into the hundred range, several hundred dollars, obviously, but it's nowhere near as expensive as, as you would imagine. Um, I think when we hit like the five mil mark or something, when we up our coverage to that, I think it's going to be in the $800 a month range or somewhere in there. But maybe that sounds like a lot to somebody, but for us, that's a drop in the bucket. You know, it's not that much money when you're thinking about a complete loss of revenue if something happens. So like if the building burns down or our storage building burns down or, or the my uh, where we store our records is off, off property here too, if something happens, I mean, it's all covered. So, I mean, that's that's the basis. Insurance is, is important. And we have other insurance that most people wouldn't need. So, you know, um, other types of insurance, it's all a package deal. You can get certain things depending on what type of business you have. I'm internet, I do online, and we're on YouTube. So I've got different insurance than a lot of people may have. Uh, I got uh, 268 people in-house. If, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the like button. I really like to get to that 100 mark on the show, especially if we're having some good conversation. Uh, we're at 72 thumbs up right now, but uh, if you are enjoying it, please hit it. It really does help the, the show with some feed, too. But let's hop back to the questions here. Uh, Gail, tried to get a BOP this morning. My insurance company doesn't do it. You're going to run into that. Um, I don't call out or market uh, insurance um, like that, but um, I, I can give some advice on who we use. Um well, I don't know where I'd want to put that at, but I, I'm not one to try and promote any insurance company or anything like that. We we have one. It's a national company, has a side business. Um, I'll just tell you that the company is mostly known for car insurance. So you can kind of figure out from there. It'll take you a few minutes to figure out who to call, but I'll give you that one there. Um, we've had them for, I don't know, eight, ten years. We've had a business owner's policy, um, and I feel very comfortable having that. Um it's just like having car insurance. I wouldn't go medical insurance. It's the same principle. It it it, it gives you a, a a good feeling, I should say. I feel comfortable knowing that. Um, hang on, just a second here. I feel comfortable knowing that if something happens, I'm not losing my business. If if let's say you're um, doing a business and this is all you're doing, this is the only income you have coming in, and your house burns down. A lot of times, your homeowner's insurance will not cover that. It won't cover your business expenses. It only covers the homeowner, the, the personal stuff. And if you're running a business out of there, it's not going to cover that. But if your, home, or if your business owner's policy will cover the building and a lot of the stuff in it, you may lose some of your personal like clothing and stuff, but it's going to cover almost everything else in your building, even if it's um, you know some personal items. Like your furniture and stuff could still be covered, depending on how your policy works. But it doesn't work the other way. I, too many uh, homeowners policies, or if you're a renter, renter's insurance is a good thing. Um, don't cover, though, the business aspect of it. I would go for the business aspect if you're running your business out of your home. Again, I'm not an accountant. I'm, this is just my personal opinion. You know, and it, it ha Nothing I'm telling you has ever done us wrong doing it this way. Uh, again, I fully would always have a business owner's policy if it's the only form of your income. It, it's a needed expense because what are you going to do again? As I said, if somebody breaks and steals your laptops or your house burns down or it's flooded or a tornado, anything, my business owner's policy can cover for other issues. If I get hurt or something, there are some options in there for you to be covered as well. So what if you can't go source? What if you can't, if your hands or both arms are broken or something? I know that may sound crazy, but I've personally been involved in a, with a friend in a issue where he did have both broken arms. So you know, stuff does happen. Used to be a banker. Open a completely separate account and transfer money out of the main account um, in a sweep once you get to a certain amount. Yeah, I would say we keep separate accounts. Keep a personal account and then business accounts as well. If you run several businesses, which we do, we've got quite a few different businesses these days, different entities. We even have several now DBAs that we use as well have a separate account for each one so if something happens to one of those you can separate the funds so if, if you're held accountable or something or you don't have insurance you've got another safety net just like um, being an S Corp same basic principle you're separating your personal life from the business life 
and S Corp does that as well for you. You're basically an employee of your business, so it'll cost you like fifteen hundred bucks if you go through an accountant to become an S Corp, and it, it, it's worth it because you can save a ton of money tax wise. Any tax loophole you can get that's legal, just, and allowed, I would recommend using. If it's there, if the big corporations can use it, why can't we? You know, as long as it's legit, run it through your account. Don't just do something out there, you know. Uh, Daryl, I think eBay wants to get rid of the people who just sell a couple items a year and start uh, gating new people like Amazon. I've often thought about the gating prospect on eBay. Um, in some aspect, it goes to the Vero. That's basically eBay's gating process. Um, a Vero, and then boom, um, that's what happens. I mean, you just got to be careful on, on stuff. I, I don't think they want to get rid of the casual sellers, in, in my opinion. It, uh, from a business standpoint, um, thinking this logically as, as a business, um, uh, Dale, I would say personally that they would like to have those casual ones because a lot of those people who would sell a couple items here, a couple items there, probably are going to buy from the site. Maybe they don't get a bunch of you know income from them selling a few items, but they buy from the site. So in in that aspect, they generate income on both ends of the the thing. They're burning they're burning the candle at both ends basically. They're buying and they're usually selling. A lot of people who start to sell a couple items are probably people who have bought from the site and at least know how it works and feel comfortable enough to list. That's my take on it. You know. Hey Terry, how are you doing this evening as well? Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Full, I don't think they can afford to push away any business. Now, again, that, that should be their, their thinking on this. That should 100% be their thinking on this. But again, they're not thinking like a business. They're thinking about the profits. They're thinking about stockholders, what's going to put to their pocket. The people making the decision like a CEO, CFO, are paid like in some cases, like 70% of a of a, an executive's pay is based on stock options. It can be 70%. Their base salary may be 200000 but they may make 2 or $3 million in stocks. So what are they going to worry about? They're not going to worry about their their salary basis. They're going to figure out what's the best way to bring you know, money to the bottom line for stocks. That's that's what their goal is. And that's not just eBay. That's everybody. That's every every big business, you know? Obviously, I like to get money into, but I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm going to use a word I don't usually use, but skank every dime I can out of one of my customers. That's not my goal, you know. I want them to be treated fairly and think that they're getting a good deal off me or something that they really value or like, and that I took care of it all the way to it reached them and is now in their possession. And that's that's my goal. Daryl, you don't have to do that. Well, thank you very kindly for the five dollars super chat, Daryl. Um, yeah, it. it Hard, everybody should realize, everybody, that this, this whole experience of reselling is hard work. It, it, it is hard work beyond belief. For those who say that this is not a job and it's not hard work, they've never done it before. I think anybody, and I know Daryl's going to say the same thing, it's a lot of work. You know, some days you'll have, you know, great stuff come in and you'll have mega dough coming in from items you just got in and stuff, but it's not always like that. A lot of times you have to work your store and constantly be hammering offers to watchers and all that kind of stuff you'll get in a groove and, and things just kind of play play out for you and work very well but thank you very kindly for that daryl it is a lot of work for for the whole aspect of it i'm not always right i do make mistakes and stuff too but i really try to give out valid um honest good data and my opinions are, are based on experience and and research you know so take it with a grain of salt if you you know have some other thoughts or something else works for you what works for me may not work for everybody else, you know. Uh, what's popped down? I hope eBay doesn't start gating uh, Susan A. Who knows what they're going to do. Again, I sell vintage. There's, there's no real way I can think that they could possibly gate 99% of what I sell. So, again, I'm into safer categories. I'm not saying I don't love the video games and making good quick profits on newer stuff or electronic stuff. I just don't mess with it too much anymore. I'd rather mess with the stuff that that you see me sell all the time we do fba and i do all that other kind of stuff and we do nos and stuff i just don't do a lot talking about it because competition wise around here is horrendous um there's not a lot so if you you share certain things my my business certain areas might be done overnight so again depends on what you sell how your business is going to go on all this in my personal opinion 
I don't see a traditional sense that they're going to go in and gate, but I do see as time progresses, as I said, the new CEO is going to speed up the, the transition to Amazon, in my personal opinion. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to disparage the guy. I have no faith in the people running eBay right this minute. That's my opinion again, um, because they're not thinking like... They're, they're thinking of the Amazon, again, their pocketbook with stocks. They're not thinking about what's going to improve the site to make more people come to the site. That's all that should matter, not what's going on with your stocks. I would give up. I would lose stock money if it meant I could improve the site because in the long run, I'm going to come out better. I'm going to have longevity. I'm going to have – I'd rather have a steady paycheck over a long length of time than get one big handout and be done with it. I would rather know that that money is constantly going to be coming in. It, it, there's – there's two ways of thought. I'm never out for the quick, quick buck. I don't care about that so much, so to speak. That's why I sell stuff that's long tail. Because I don't care. I don't need to worry. I don't need to rush it in. I know everybody's not in that boat, so I'm not trying to make light of anybody's situation. But you're going to come to a point. Everybody out there, you'll come to a point if if you're doing this long enough. I mean everybody, where things like that aren't going to be an issue, and you're not going to matter. Just like transferring money quicker and having the money over. Your goal should be to get to a point where you don't have to worry about getting the money back right away. You can let it float here. We, we float stuff all the time. I buy, you know, one month we may buy $10,000 worth of inventory or more. I may buy $10,000 from one person, like the buttons, for example. We're $8,700, I think, we're into buttons. I haven't sold a single one. You've got to be able to float some things and, and work them into where they go. You, you, that's your goal. That's that's that needs to be your goal. You need to be able to have the funds. You need to have backup money. You need to to get to a point where you're not living sale to sale or paycheck to paycheck. Again, when I worked for somebody else, even though I made good money, it still seemed even when I, I had money coming in, it still seemed like you're paycheck to paycheck. I don't live that way anymore, and it's all because of reselling. I, I don't, you know, there's nothing else I can say. That's literally how I got to this point in our life. I'm still making more than I ever have right now, right this month, than I've ever had in my life. And almost every month I do this, I can say that. I'm making more than last month. I'm making more than last month, over and over and over again. Again, it's it's hard work. Back to Daryl there, it, it's hard work for anybody out there. If, if you're if it, it, getting this kind of money and, and getting uh, fulfillment out of it should be hard work in my book. I, I don't want the easy road for, for this. I'd be happy if I won the lottery, sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm never never going to bank on that. I buy a lottery ticket once in a blue moon if I'm there. I don't go to the gas station very much, so I don't really have to worry about it. Um, anyway, let's move on. I know I'm rambling now. Hey, Carlene, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on. Well, thank you. I, I do try to help. Thank you very kindly, Carlene. Uh, Greg, I have the most basic store. Not sure how or why, but I'm allowed up to 25,000 uh, items or 65,000, whichever is first. Um, it might be because of the pandemic. If the amount of items that you list is not um, tied to your store level at all, you can have any store level and have a certain amount. You can just start off on eBay and only be able to list you know, 50 items or whatever their limits are these days and, and have an anchor store. It depends on what you want. So they're, they don't correlate together at all. I think we can list like $15 million on the site, I think is what we're at. And I think it's 2.5 million items is what I can list on eBay. That's my my level. I think I've shown that off before. Um, I think I've pretty much given a screenshot on that, if I'm not mistaken. Well, thank you, Marty. Yeah, I do love paper. I, you know, the, the last haul, the paper went to 50 pounds. I could have had two or 300 pounds of it, but I was selective. I spent a couple hours, and I looked through everything because I don't I don't just try to grab everything. Um, I picked the stuff that was cheaper but had some good value to it. That That's finding the needle in the haystack is what I like to do. It's like a treasure hunt. It's like I'm digging for, you know, a lost treasure and, you know, a pirate's treasure chest or something. All That's how I feel all the time, it feels like. Especially if I'm out in the real world trying to source. Not so much these days, but... Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well, Michelle. New video again for those up. I see quite a few more people from Patreon. New video up in Patreon right now. I will get to everybody's... La I answered, I think, half or more of the questions in Patreon before the live show today. If I don't get to them tonight, I will get to them early in the morning. Um, I'm trying to get everything up earlier. So, like, tomorrow's YouTube video, I'd really like to get up earlier and stuff like that. Um... Again, the wife is sick right now, so I may be a little bit behind on some things. 
do you have to change the automatic payments for eBay fees from uh, PayPal to manage payments? Yes, it'll automatically sync it over. It's already set up, so once you roll over, it's automatically going to the eBay version. Again, as Duncan made a comment earlier, there could be some issues with refunds if they don't set it up right when they do the changeover. That would be my guess. Yeah, uh, Monica's... Hang on here. Uh, let me not miss anybody. Uh, Yvette, uh, do you have to... Oh, that's what we already got. I'm sorry. Uh... Bob, I'm still holding off on jumping ship from PayPal. Just be careful, Bob. They could actually shut you down if you're not doing what they tell you. It's their site. You know, it's not a public service. It's a, you know, paid site. So just be careful, uh, Bob. And Monica is, uh, I think people's reservations about managed payment is not giving their personal information. Um, it's who the information is being given to after the criminal act. They already know where you live now. Let's just put it that way. If eBay wanted to, you're paying through PayPal. They got a connection with PayPal. They could probably pull whatever information I would I would gather at some point anyway. You know, I, I there everything's interconnected now. You know, just like your shipping labels. The post office can see where you're sending, how you're sending it. They can probably even see the item that you're you're selling if they really want to. Again, because they if you overcharge or undercharge a package, you come back and they bill you for that item. So they've got reverse ability to go back into ebay at, after the fact so you know just fyi I, i'm not really worried about again about that aspect either again it's a crime to do anything like that if they use your information for any any kind of gain like that they didn't have that information this person who they went after wasn't even on ebay they only went after him because of what they were talking about ebay so they can get anything they want. That's that's my opinion, especially since if you've watched those charges, two of the people now that are indicted were like sheriffs or um, police chiefs. So if they wanted to get your personal data and stuff, I'm sure they could get it. They could make up some BS. This person might be doing some illegal acts. We need to look at their bank account. I'm serious. If they want to get something, they can get it. You know, I, just go to a Reddit. Go to the dark web, you know. Like Tor, I could find pretty much anything. You can buy those numbers offline. Uh, Cornfed420, let's get some uh, likes, folks. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to have to let it go here. I didn't realize we're after 8. I get into conversation. Um, I really tried to get to as many questions as I could today. Let's just take one or two more. Um, Suzanne, I just had my first multi-sale in one day. Three sales in one day with one item. I didn't think it would sell at all. Yeah, again, a lot of people will list something. Um, it doesn't sell right away. They'll relist it once more, and then they'll take it down and be done with it. A lot of things you need the right person on if it's a collectible. You know, what's the chances of, of you having some oddball, scarce item and that one person who might want that being on in just a week or two? It, it's slim in many cases, so that's why long tail works. But long tail works mostly for vintage collectibles and things like that. You know, if it's a good item, it sells quick, obviously. But, you know, uh, the, you got to know the ins and outs and what you're doing, I guess. Yeah, there's Dr. Fools talking about uh, the listings tied to your uh, store level. Hey, Claudie, how you doing? Uh, where are we at? Yeah, Naomi, I've, we talked about this, too, with Dom on the live show on Tuesday here. Um, if you haven't seen it, again, Dom was on the channel on Tuesday, and we had a nice live show. Um, I would source everything you can right now. There could be a lockup. We already have hospitals almost to capacity in several states now, so just be cautious. Make sure you're, you're being safe when you're out there, wearing the masks and the whole works. Um, be cautious, but get the inventory you need because if there's another lockdown, it's going to prolong it even farther possibly. You'll be running in the fourth quarter. So now's the time. So I say fourth quarter should be the only thing on your mind now. Don't worry about what's going on with eBay. You know, If you want to continue to do this, just sign up and be done with it and take that headache off your mind. If something happens down the road, it's going to happen down the road. You know, There's not much you can do about it. Errors happen all the time now. What's going to be the difference? Uh, it's going to be about the same matter. Issues happen, this happens, that happens, they change something. There's going to be more changes down the road. They've been changing eBay since day one. When I started on eBay, you could bid on your own item once. You could bid on your own item once. You could also leave feedback for people 
as a seller on buyers. You could leave a negative feedback on a buyer back then. There's a lot of things that you could do that have changed over the, the time frame. You could take cash in an envelope. You take personal, you could, there's tons of stuff that you used to be able to do. No way to print labels one by one. You'd have to go to the post office when we started. One by one by one by one. Each package had to be weighed out at the post office. That's how I started with this. So, you know, there's a lot of good changes. You know, again, the site itself is good. The people running it is the issue. And I do understand, you know, the thinking of trusting eBay with those numbers. But, you know, any site you have your numbers on can be, can be hacked. The bank can be hacked. You know, banks are hacked all the time, too. But... Um, yeah, we're going to end it here. I've got um, quite a few still there. I do apologize. You know I try to get to the questions top to bottom. I don't try to skip anything, and I try to answer fully and not just give you a one word. My dog's down here again. But uh, I do appreciate everybody coming on. I will have another live show coming out, obviously, next Thursday at 7 o'clock as well. Another video is ready for tomorrow. I think I still have to do uh, the ending credits on it. If you're in Patreon, I, I've updated the credits. I just uh, So you will see the next video will have um, your names in it if they uh, have not been. I do update those like on a 7 or 10 day cycle because it takes like 15 minutes or more to add one single name to the end of the credits. Um, you will see a new credit for the end of the YouTube channels as well. Um, and one more call out in the Weebles video. Uh, the next step, in part two, will be out. There are seven shot already of the Weebles. So it's not something we're just doing one-offs and things like that. We have a couple other topics that we're going to go into in videos similar to that as well, too, that will go more into depth and help you see what's included and things like that and other areas, too. Um, I'll have some button videos coming out with helping you identify overall what to look for when you're outsourcing with buttons on YouTube. Those ones will be out. We are working on a book on identification on uniforms in general that will cover ones that none of the other books are covering as well. Um, again, we're big into that, so I know there's some other folks out there who do buy buttons as well too, but it's a huge area. Single individual shirt buttons can go for four, five, six thousand dollars or more in some cases. So the money's there. Let's just put it that way. But we'll end it there for tonight. I do appreciate everybody coming on. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. We're still in the two, I think there's what, 262 right now in the house. So I appreciate everybody coming on tonight. Again, managed payments is here to stay. You get more listings though from what my email said with managed payments. I get an extra 25,000 free listings if I'm under managed payments after July, uh, July 30th. So those are the dates we got, and that's what we're working with. So onward, forward, we're looking at fourth quarter on our end. But have a good evening. Hope you enjoyed the conversation today.